John, there have been many very moving tributes to the three men who lost their lives on Saturday here in Reading. But what happened here outside the Blaygrave Arms about an hour ago was particularly poignant. The three men, Joe Ritchie Bennett, James Furlong and David Wales, were, were regulars here. And it's more than a pub. It is a community centre. It's the beating heart, basically, of the gay community here in Reading. And we just wanted to give you a sense of a statement that was read out just about an hour ago from a representative from the gay community here in Reading. I wish I could stand here and say that I can make sense of the senseless. But sadly today, like many others, I can't. We've become so used to seeing incidents like this on the television. But this time, we cannot change the channel. This time, it's on our doorstep. And this time, it's happened to people that we know. We also got a very visceral and personal sense of the, the lives of these remarkable three men. Here's what we learnt about them today. Reading's line went quiet today. The town symbol in the park where Saturday's attack happened surveyed the police, the forensics teams, the minute silence. Then the silence was filled with the tributes. The students of James Furlong, the 36-year-old head of history at the Holt Secondary School in Wokingham, had a catchphrase. Like, be safe, be careful and don't do anything I wouldn't do. And like, that's why I wrote up that. It was, in fact, permission. Permission to find out about your history, to find your voice. So here's another catchphrase. No one forgets a great teacher. He cared about every single one of us and always wanted us to do our best. He always looked out for us. He just knew, like, each and every one of us, like, individually. He knew how to make us, like, laugh and smile. And, like, I think that's what made him such a great teacher. Sacrifice his lunches and after school just to help students go that little bit further and succeed. Martin Cooper was a close friend. He'd be a confidant uh, Would he? to a me. A bit of relationship counselling? Yes, a bit of, yes, is that definitely right? some okay. of that, yeah. Was he good on that sort of stuff? Uh, he was good, yes. He knew all of the three men who died. In fact, they wanted him to join them at the park on Saturday. But he was busy as an organiser of Reading Pride. Joe Ritchie Bennett was originally from Philadelphia, had lived in Britain for 15 years. He texted his friend Martin that afternoon. And what, what did he say in the text? Uh, he just said, hey, gorgeous. Um, and then it would usually go on from there, but I didn't reply to that at the time. OK. Unfortunately. And so... Um, yeah, um, I'm gutted about that. After news of the attack started to come through, Martin texts Joe back. I just said, please tell me you're safe. And then I tried to call him and it didn't go through. This afternoon, the third person who died was named as David Wales, a scientist. The Blair Grave Arms was his spot. A friend described him to us as a man who didn't say much, but when he did, it either made you think or cracked you up. Since Saturday, it's emerged that the man arrested, suspected of carrying out the attack, was Libyan asylum seeker Kiri Sadala. Today, the Home Secretary visited the scene in Reading. I think the public should take reassurance on the basis that over the last three years, our security and intelligence services have prevented 25 attacks from taking place. Um, that is significant, and obviously our intelligence services, our security services, they do work in an integrated way to prevent attacks and to put the right kind of processes in place to protect the public. As is often the case with these incidents, in time, the vibrancy of the lives lost eclipsed that of the one that took them away. The day started with a minute's silence. For us, it ended with silence too. The answer to this question. If, if the suspected attacker was sitting here with us, what, what would you say to him? Honestly, nothing. I'm joined by Tommy Snipe and Mark Lawrence, who were at the tribute here earlier, just to get some reaction from the community itself. 
Uh, Tommy, to you first of all, you, know, you knew Joe, isn't that correct? Uh, yeah, I, I did know Joe, yeah. C can you just reflect on his, on his life? What, what was he like, basically? Um, he was uh, really bubbly, really friendly, um, and, you know, he was part of, part of the community here. Um, so uh, our, our rugby club, our local inclusive rugby club, have a monthly uh, pub quiz in the, in the Blar Grave, and he was almost always there um, at the bar, um, invariably not doing very well on the quiz. Um, but, yeah, yeah. He um, sounds like a remarkable man. Yeah, he was. You'll miss him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah. Um, Mark, can I turn to you? Obviously, this, t this attack, as far as we're aware, didn't have a, a homophobic, uh, you know, it wasn't directed at the gay community as such, but you're feeling it as, as a community, isn't that correct? Well, yeah, I mean, the community is like a family, and to be honest with you, the general community in Reading is very much like that. Reading is a multicultural town, it has been for generations. So naturally, everyone here is feeling um, very vulnerable, very um, emotional. I mean, I feel emotional right now just talking to you. I've lived here all my life, and there's a real sense of community in Reading in general. So this well, we can, we can literally thing. see that behind you now, yeah. can't we? People have come. It's been a very poignant couple of hours here, hasn't it? It has been, and it's been like that throughout the town as well, to be fair, in the general community. Reading is a very tight-knit town. Um, we celebrate our differences, uh, our different communities and what have you, and naturally everyone's feeling the losses that we've experienced um, for the people that have been injured. And I'm sure I can speak for the community in general in saying about how amazing our emergency services have been and you know, we will stay strong and hopefully things will look better in the future, so... Thank you, thank you very much bo thank both you. for those words. So just a sense there, I guess, a, a picture of a very, uh, like the three men, a very resilient community uh, here in Reading. Back to you. Thanks, Park, very much. Well, police are still piecing together what they know about the 25-year-old Libyan suspect, as well as trying to find out more about his time living in the UK. His family in Libya have told Channel 4 News they're shocked to hear of his arrest, as well as expressing concern about the victims. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilson, has spoken to two family members in Tripoli. Khairi Sadala sent pictures home to show how he was adapting to life in the UK. But the photos of himself looking happy that the family have shared with us hid a darker reality. A relative told me that when they spoke on the phone last week... He sounded very stressed and he wanted to see a doctor. I'm not feeling well, he told me. I can't sleep. He was really disturbed, depressed. He had nightmares. The trouble with him is that he's afraid of someone killing him. In 2011... Like thousands of other young Libyan men, Sadala, then aged only 16, joined the revolution to overthrow Colonel Gaddafi. He travelled from Tripoli to Benghazi in eastern Libya to fight with the February 17th Martyrs Brigade, the largest and best armed militia in the country. The revolution had the support of NATO, which bombed Gaddafi's tanks to stop them from entering Benghazi. Sadala was well aware that Britain, where some members of his family lived, backed the cause for which he was fighting. But after Gaddafi fell, militias started fighting each other, and some adopted radical Islam. The relative said that was the trigger for Sadala's mental health problems. When Kairi joined the revolution, he supported human rights and wanted to change the system and fight for democracy in the country. This is what he thought in 2011 and in 2012, but you see what happened. At the end of 2012, it all came apart. He wanted to forget all about it because lots of people died. Sadala went to Manchester, where he studied computing. But he didn't like being part of the large Libyan community there, preferring Reading, where he had a brother. While he looks relaxed in photographs, the family acknowledged that he had a quick temper and was known to have had fights. The relative I spoke to said far from being an Islamist, he had converted to Christianity. He was known to drink alcohol. He was a party guy. He used to party a lot. He had a girlfriend in Reading. They used to collect stuff and bring it to the church for homeless people. He met her there. In Reading, in 
Sadala's family say they're shocked at what happened in Reading on Saturday and find it hard to believe that he could be a suspect. The shock and horror for the families of those who lost their lives must be even greater.